Hey, what's up everyone? It's your buddy Matt here. Welcome back to my channel live from the birthplace of I guess the modern snowmobile Valco Quebec. They're putting on their annual snowmobile show and parade and we're gonna check that out. Stay tuned. All right, so just uh, just went to go pick up my swag bag. Uh, they really put on a great show here uh, every year. It's been off. I think it's the first time in three years that they uh, that they started back up because of COVID. They uh, they took a little pause, but uh, yeah, I got my got my lanyard, got my little swag bag, and uh, I'm gonna go check out uh, the exposition. So that's his original suit he said when he was 17 years old. So he still has it, still has the sled. Pretty cool, pretty cool. <laughs> All right, I want to go show you guys the nicest 72 775 you'll probably ever see. C'est votre machine, ça? Ma machine, ça. Je pense ça va être le plus beau. TNT 72, 775 que quelqu'un pourrait avoir. Hein? Euh, beaucoup d'ouvrage, hein? beaucoup de travail dedans. Ouais. An absolutely exceptional sled.
you show up to an event and you're wearing the same suit as someone else. I love this, the sheepskin look on an old snow cruiser with the opposed twin. Absolutely lovely. A little jumping contest, freestyle. We're not here for freestyle, modern freestyle snowmobiles. We want to see the old stuff. Let's uh, let's carry on with that. C'est ça, Etienne? Oui. Ben, J'ai une question par rapport à ça. Le 6,69, c'était ça. Lui, 3,99 sur un bandé 18 pouces. C'est quoi l'histoire? C'est le 69. Ils ont décidé de mettre des 3,99 sur le bandé de 6 Parce qu'il en restait ou c'est quoi? Non, oui. ben, c'est d'après moi pour faire que les 36 allaient être. Alright, right, so I just spoke to the owner of this 1969 TNT 399 and I had a really important question. Is this an actual sled that existed? And he says that it is. There was like 190 some odd of them made and the particularity of them is it's a 399 engine in what would have been the 669 style body, the 18 inch track. It has the double rear idlers like the 69, 669, but he says that he bought it from a guy in Bose. There's no documentation other than a few parts lists and he claims that it is an actual late model 1960 sled. I actually believe him. I think that that actually was something. Another thing he noted though is that contrary to the 669, it doesn't have the uh, the handlebar hoop. The handlebar is held onto the engine. Very interesting. If you guys know anything about this sled, leave it down in the comments below. But apparently in the late 1969 year, they would have put some 399 engines in the larger 18 inch track frame. Awesome. <laughs> You don't see a land blizzards every day. So the day is for Skidoo, but we do have some special guests, other brands of snowmobiles. Everyone's invited. Oh, an El Tigre Z. And a 444 liquid. Those of you who know me know that 444 has a very special place in my heart, even if it's a moto ski. I love that. So the year was 1967 and Bombardier dealerships received a memo that they would be receiving a limited quantity of 600cc Rotax engines. They could install them into the sled of their choice. But upon further review, they realized that none of the current sleds were beefy enough for this new high horsepower twin cylinder engine. 
They then revised their memo stating that they would be receiving complete sleds identified as the Track and Trail 600. You guessed it. TNT 600, the first year of the TNT model. It had a 600cc twin cylinder Rotax and it was installed on a beefed up Olympic 370 frame. If you guys know me, you guys know that I love the Olympic 370s. So I'm kind of happy that the TNT's heritage comes from such a wonderful pedigree of a machine. Very, very few of them were produced, probably about 125, and only 11 or so exist today. And here in Valco is one magnificent example. Twin carbs, twin pipes, and the trademark black dot, all signatures of this first model year. You can definitely see the resemblance to a 68 Olympic. It does have these extra louvers on either side, and it is beefed up throughout frame-wise, even as a little baby windshield. Very, very glad to see this sled here today. Beautiful, beautiful sled. So one of the perks of being a collector is that we're gonna get exclusive access to the archives. Uh, we're gonna go in and see some prototype sleds, some super rare stuff. Uh, whatever's not currently exposed in the museum is kept in the archives, and we're gonna go check that out next. So we're actually going down into the basement. So there's the regular reserve that the museum goers can see. And this is even more top secret. VIP, VIP privileges here. You can feel the controlled environment as we enter into storage location number two. Here's Stan Hayes's uh, Formula Plus, came in second in the Hurricana uh, endurance race. Glad to see one of my first sleds made it into this archive. Just imagine how many items are archived down here. Not so sure where we're going now, but uh, we'll find out. So we just met up uh, with Guy Pepin, who is in charge of acquisitions here at the museum, and he explained to us the acquisition process. Uh, he gave us an example, that 73 Elite, uh, how they go through all the criteria to select and acquire. They have close to 200 machines here on site and over 3,000 individual items. He also mentioned that he acquired some motoski stuff that was at a table that he was showing us. Uh, and as a fun fact, one of the oldest items that has the word skidoo on it, not with any actual affiliation, with the skidoo we know uh, is this small container of cream that says skidoo on it from the turn of the century. Very, very strange. So that wraps up all the top secret stuff that they got hiding down in the basement of this wonderful museum. Well, that's about it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next one. Sign it out.